All right, everybody. It is Monday, May 8th, 1 o'clock. It's actually 12.59. Makai is very on time, poignant, making sure he's all set up. And thank you to Ethan for helping make this happen. Um, but I am joined by a very special guest, Makai Lewis. He is hailing from Somerset, New Jersey. He's a three-time NCAA qualifier, two-time national fi finalist, two-time ACC champ, a junior world champion, 2019 national champion, and 2019 most outstanding wrestler. Welcome to the show, Makai. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Let's get right into it. Cinco de Mayo. I'm driving to my buddy Trent Young's wedding down in Williamsburg, Virginia. Phone starts blowing up. Everybody's texting, and it's just a tweet. I don't see anything. And the caption reads, thank you, Virginia Tech. And I'm like, damn, Makai's out of here. He's wrapping it up. I watched the whole video. Lo and behold, you're returning for another year. Um, so just wanted to ask you a little bit what went into your return. Um, what ultimately led you to making that decision? Um, so I talked to multiple people. But I think uh, talking with my parents, uh, Coach Roby, even like some teammates, like former teammates like uh, Zach Savaski and uh, Corbin Myers about, you know, um, like say if I didn't come back and – like having like that regret, of, like not knowing if I would have like did good or like did anything, you know? So I just told myself like, it's just one more year, you know, you might as well, you can still like enjoy like being in the town of Blacksburg. You can enjoy, you know, still getting your education, even a higher education now. And then, like, also just wrestling for, like, one more year. And I was just like, you know, like, what's the worst that could happen? So, And we talked a little bit to Hunter about it, uh, and we heard Liz talk about their decision to return. Uh, it's great to see so many athletes opting to return to Virginia Tech. Um, what kind of role did he play in it? Um, how adamant was he about you wanting to come back and wrestle for the team versus you making the best decision for yourself? Um. Well, ultimately, he just told me, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, my decision. So, like, he basically, like, told me the reasons why he came back, you know, and, like, I, like, took that into consideration. And then also uh, we just talked about, like, what he went through, like, his last season. So I just think, like, all of that, like, played out into, like, being able to, like, come to a conclusion of like, you know what, maybe I should come back. And how exactly did you let him know? When did you know and how did you let him know? Um, so I knew like probably like, uh, like two weeks ago, maybe. I knew like it was like, it was like mid April that like I like knew I was coming back. And then um, I didn't let anybody know honestly but then I, I guess like people on the team so actually I told coach Roby and then I told like my parents and I told like a couple teammates and then I guess like some other people on the team started to find out and it just starts like circling around like that so yeah. and I actually made a call to the pen for our uh oh man principal announcement I actually made a call to the pen uh to my buddy Kyle Berkner we grew up together in Westwood New Jersey he wrestled up there um and for my lack of wrestling knowledge, I would always call him up and we'd live stream the games together and he'd be walking me through how everything worked as I learned the game. But I got some questions for him. So um, through all the injuries, the weight cutting, missing out on real life to stay disciplined, what has kept you coming back, not just for this extra year, but year after year after year to the mat? Uh, like you said, like the discipline. Cause like a lot of stuff that we do in wrestling now is going to carry over into like the real world and like, into like me being productive and um, doing stuff that's like more so like uh, positive than like, I guess like negative and not really trying to like focus on, and not saying like partying is like negative or anything or like doing stuff with like friends or like uh, having fun, but uh, it just keeps you focused a little bit more and it, it makes it a lot easier uh, for you to just like, you know, have goals and like set them. Cause like, even like after wrestling, I like, 
know like what goals I have like when I like start my job and wherever I work at. So and from a strategy perspective, where do you feel most dominant? Neutral, mm -hmm. top, bottom? We know how explosive you are from all three, but do you have a preference? Um not really. I just like let the match play out. Like different opponents, you gotta strategize differently. So like for me, I just try to make sure like I'm like disciplined in all three positions. Cause like if you are, then like it's gonna be hard for someone to beat you at that point. And then when you're tied up with someone in a low scoring grudge match, what's going on in your mental in your mental? Is it strategy for a takedown? Is it all feel and trust in your training? Um, how do you approach a low scoring grudge match like that? Uh, just trusting my training and just like making everything hard for the other opponent. You know, like a lot of people, uh, I feel like get caught up in like, uh, sometimes doing too much, but then other times not doing enough. I try to like make it a balance of just like, you know, not even thinking about it. Just like, cause we go through like situations like that in the practice room all the time. So it's just like a natural instinct at this point and just like letting it play out like wherever way it does. And how do you approach wrestlebacks? Um, for those who don't know, that is uh, when you're in a tournament and essentially matches are added. Um, you're wrestling more than you would have expected um, to get back into place for those tournaments. So how, what is your approach during a wrestleback? Uh, so for those, like I remember in high school, my first two years, my freshman and sophomore year at States, I lost my first match and I had to wrestle all the way back both times and I end up placing. And I remember back in high school, I just told myself that like, I was just going to take it one match at a time and, uh, you know, try my, be try my best to win, you know, for my team, for myself. And uh, coming into college is basically like the same mindset. Like I don't really try to focus on, you know, rounds like after I focus on that round. So like as soon as I get through that round, there's the next round. Cause like as soon as you start to lose focus, that's when you can lose a match. So I like try to go about it, taking it one match at a time and just try to get through it. Cause you know, uh, being a little older now, like your body gets tired and it's a little, it's a little harder getting through those rounds. But like, I think if you have like a strong mindset, like you could, you could do it. Speaking on that strong mindset, from all of the injuries or challenges or ones that haven't been talked about, what was the most difficult thing for you to overcome over your career, whether it was mental, whether it was physical? Um, what was what, what did when you look back at your career, what were one of the most challenging moments for you? Um, probably mental, like and also physical. So in 2022, uh, when I made it to the finals again for the second time. I was going through like a lot of like mental like blocks. I felt like I uh, like really had like a really bad like depressions and um, getting through that, like talking with people, going to uh, my coaches, uh, family. And also even like I had uh, my therapist at the time uh, and just all of them helping me out through that, like really like uh, – affect me in like a positive way and like really built my uh, mentality up and like my mindset up. But then also that same year I was still like hurt. So like, I like injured my hand, my back was hurt. And like, even like my uh, foot, like I hurt my foot, my knee, but like people didn't know that, but like I had all these injuries and I was dealing it with like a lot of mental stuff. But like, I felt like as soon as I got myself in the right mindset, like, I like basically like got myself through it. So like it just helped with like now in the future, I feel like I could get through anything. I remember Kyle always talks about it and I have that <clears throat> same feeling from football. In the real world, you're usually not going to, you're definitely not going to have the physical demanding uh, aspect mm -hmm. of that at a desk job when you're putting on your tie and sit behind a desk. Um, but at the same standpoint, uh, the lessons that come from not just individual sports or being on a team as well are going to pay huge dividends at your next, uh, at your next venture. Yeah. Um, Ed Vechkin asked, what area of your wrestling are you most focused on, looked to focus for next season? What is the uh, biggest focus for you in your wrestling next year? Top. Top. Why? Top. 
because if you could score points on top, it makes it a whole lot easier to like, you know, win a match. That's how I won nationals my freshman year. Basically got a four point move and then uh, held the kid to like one point, you know, he didn't get a takedown on me. I ended up getting a takedown late in that match too, but like as soon as you could score points on top, you could open up a lot of matches. So, and also top and then trying to get like uh, feet to back points. So like one of my teammates is really good at that Bryce where he like, you know, he could get in on a double and then he could like go upper body and just basically like, you know, throw people to their back. I'm not looking to do that, but maybe like get into a double and maybe like trying to just stick them to their back. But like stuff like that, like I feel is going to be my main focus for the next season. So and I know you're not a talk about yourself kind of guy. Um we all know that uh, wrestling is a little bit different. Everybody's going to try to do their best, and that kind of equals how the team succeeds. But I'd be remiss to ask you, you've been with this program for so long, and Coach Roby has done an amazing job building this program and not just elevating them to an ACC pedestal, but putting them in the national conversation. So as you come back and you look to accomplish your individual goals, how do you also view your impact on this program as it looks to continue to get into that upper echelon national conversation? Um, you know, uh, I kind of like view it as like, cause a lot of these guys like watched me wrestle when they was in high school. And, like a lot of them like tell me uh, like how they like thought it was like really cool to be on the team with me, how they looked up to me and like how, like they were a fan of me before like we even became teammates. So I think, like, that brings, like, a lot of joy to me, but also just knowing, like, where, like, they came from and, like, now, like, them seeing what I did and, like, they're trying to do more now, you know what I mean? Because, like, I, I won nationals, but I, like, clear in my mind know that someone, like, on our team now could be, like, a multiple-time national champion. We got people on our team who could win nationals and – like seeing that and seeing like where our program was till like now, it's like, it's pretty like cool and exciting. And speaking to some of those recruits, undoubtedly there'll be, you know, high schoolers or even younger folks that listen to this or folks looking to maybe transfer. What about the Virginia tech wrestling program has helped you elevate your game? I love to see how many folks in, whether it's mixed martial arts or wrestlers come back to be part of the staff. You have the SERTC program at Virginia tech. Um, what would you say the sell for Virginia Tech was for you coming in, and what have you learned about it since you've been there? Um, basically, so the sell was, was like we're like a family, like, and I say that all the time. And I feel like a lot of people um, don't understand it until like they're around the team, you know, and like not even like inside the wrestling room. It's like outside the wrestling room. Like a lot of us hang out with each other. And, like, we do stuff all the time together. And, like, that's the type of stuff that you want. Like, you know, you want, like, a brotherhood. You don't want to be on a team where it's, like, like guys don't really like each other and, like, they don't get along. And it's, like, just for show. And I felt like that when I went to other places on, revi- on recruiting visits. And I remember every time I came to Tech, it was the same, like, every single time. And, like, it's been that same way, like, since I've been here. You know, you get guys on team, like, not everybody's going to get along with each other. But, like, we still, like, you know, have each other's back at the end of the day. So, I feel like that's the biggest, like, point of, like, what I learned about being here is just, like, like we're basically, like, a big family. So, moving on to our rapid-fire segment. Um, some of these are wrestling-related. Some of them are not. Uh, first one's probably the toughest one. If you could have dinner with four people, dead or alive – where are you going to eat and who's coming to dinner? Damn. Yeah. Uh, that's so hard. So many people. That's so hard. There's so many people. Okay, Ray Lewis, because, mm-hmm. like, I'm a Ravens fan. And I want to talk to him about, like, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, dang, this is hard. This is so hard. Um, ah. Uh, Biggie Smalls, just uh, pick his brain about like hip hop and stuff. Um, 
Barack Obama. Uh, and then, dang, who's the last one? Michael Jordan. That would be crazy. So yeah. like, where are you going to eat? Um, Some seafood place, a seafood boil place. You know, it's going to be on them. They the one with the money. Yeah, I was about to say, who's paying for it? That's right. <laughs> not paying for that. Nope. <laughs> yeah. A um, couple of favorite things about New Jersey. I'll first ask you, uh, is it Taylor Ham or is it Pork Roll? Pork Roll. If you say Taylor Ham, I'm right. sorry. I cannot be friends with you. Damn, like, right. I guess we're not going to be friends. It's no. Pork Roll. <laughs> like, who says Taylor Ham? No, it's Pork Roll. It's, it's all of North Jersey. That's how you find out where somebody's from. If they're by the shore, or they're from South Jersey, they're getting, they're getting Pork Roll or it's Taylor Ham. Um, where, when, so do you, do you go down the shore when you're back in New Jersey? Yeah, sometimes. Where like, do you go? Like Jersey Shore sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Point Pleasant Beach. That's yep. the shore, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Like those are like the main two. Okay. Well, you said Jersey Shore. So was the first one like the Belmar area? Uh, Yeah. So like mm. basically like where Jersey Shore was like filmed at. Yeah. Because you're going to have a very different beach vacation at Point Pleasant than you are at Belmar. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. exactly. Um, pre-game music. What are you listening to before you get to the mat? Uh, that's hard. It depends on my mood. Like I like to listen to a lot of stuff. But like... I think more so it's like um like more like nineties, early two thousands like hip hop. And then like if I'm not listening to that, then it'll probably be like Michael Jackson, to be honest with you. Like some of his like upbeat songs. Uh-huh. It's cause he it, like gets me like, you know, like I guess like more so like in the mood to like, you know, do so. I can't listen to like nothing sad or anything. Yeah, no man in the mirror before you're wrestling. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not listening to that. But yeah. Um, favorite Virginia Tech memory that didn't take place on that? Favorite Virginia Tech memory. I got so many. Wait, I don't know if I could talk about that one. Uh, I cast appropriate Virginia Tech memory. Okay, appropriate. Uh, dang, dang, dang. Trying to think. There's so many. But so many that's not appropriate. Um <laughs> I guess uh just going to uh, my freshman year when I went to the gobblers. Mm -hmm. Or not not even my freshman year, last year. Or even this year too, when in the Golden Gobbler, I think that was like a good uh, moment for me because it like recognized me for like not the stuff that I was doing on the mat, but more so like off the mat and like what like uh, what I'm trying to do like working with charities and like giving back to like my community and the communities like even like out here too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, favorite place to eat at Virginia Tech? Favorite place to eat. I got so many, but like so many of them are like bad for you. So <laughs> like it's, I mean, like I like Mellow and Cabo cause they're near me, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say the other ones. The other ones I get in trouble for. Yeah. I got, I wanna ask you on the, on the subject of food just because I've, I've heard the stories about it Mm -hmm. And I don't think people really understand it. And they're like, oh, wrestlers, like they cut weight, they gain weight. Can mm -hmm. you walk me through the most difficult cut that you went through and what you had to do to get there? Does it have to be like in uh, college or high school? At any point during your career. All right. So I had two. The first one was I really didn't want to go to a tournament when they were redshirting me my freshman year. Mm -hmm. And it was in Edinburgh. Edinburgh is uh, so cold. And I think it was like, it was snowing out there. And we like looked at the forecast. It was like going to be freezing. And like, it was in their dome. So like, they don't have no heater. So it's already cold. So I'm like, I do not want to go to that tournament. I was trying to call, come up with so many excuses to like not go. And um, 
I don't know if I think it was our last tournament that year, and um, Coach Freyer made me. And I remember this. He made me. He was like, he was like, no, you're going. And I stepped on the scale. It was like I think two days before or a day before. It might have been two days before. I was about 13 and a half over. So <laughs> basically, that first day I cut like eight pounds. And then um, I still like have five more to go the next day. How are you cutting 13? How are you cutting eight pounds? Are you running so, a in a trash bag? No, so it's basically like I'm just like running on the treadmill. I like I don't use trash, but I just use like a whole bunch of clothes. Mm -hmm. I was like using a whole bunch of uh, like sweats and stuff, and then like practicing and like basically like at that point my legs were shot. So like I stopped. It was like around like I lost like seven and a half, eight pounds, and then the next day, um, then also I had to like hydrate myself. So like, I drank a little bit of water, ate something. Next day, came back in. I think I was like six over, and then I ended up losing five pounds that day. And then the tournament day, I had to lose a little bit of weight, lost that, and then ended up going to the tournament and winning. So you lost 13 pounds in two days, mm -hmm. ran nonstop, and found a way to win the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, favorite, uh, what are some of your hobbies outside of wrestling? What are you doing in, uh, around Virginia Tech when you have some time? Outside of wrestling, uh, I like playing basketball, you know, like pick up games, basketball. You call your own fouls? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing with a bunch of wrestlers, so you yeah. know, like they're going to foul you anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, sometimes it gets a little heated, but like, I don't know, I don't know, they don't realize that they're not good. So, like, I'm just like, it's not that deep, you know? But uh, so basketball, I think football, too, when we play as a team, uh, going to the pool, uh, mm -hmm. over at the retreat, that, that pool is so nice. Um, playing volleyball over there. And then also yard games, too, like cornhole. Um, we got this one, like, it's like volleyball four square. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's basically like uh, – like you serve it, it's like one serve, you serve to each other. And like one of my teammates, Kaka, he's the one that like he has it. He can explain it better than oh, me. It's the four, it's the four, uh, it's the volleyball thing that's basically yeah. yeah. square yeah. volleyball. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that like we play that and then um they do spike ball and then um what's what's the other game? It's like it's like uh, a dice and then you like throw it up and a oh, beer die. Yeah. 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 That and then, uh, yeah, that's about it. I want to get into video games again, but I need to buy a new system because I only got a PS3. So, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm way behind right now. <laughs> yeah. um, moving on to some uh, letters that we had written in, uh, letters from lunch pad written in from some fans. So Kurt Jones wants to ask, is there any chance that you go up to 184 next year and are you going to try to make the 2024 Olympic team? Um, well, I wish I could, but they probably won't let me, but, uh, probably not wrestling money for, if they let me, I would, but probably not. And then, um, the Olympic team, yeah, I'm gonna try to make it, but that, then I'm probably gonna wrestle 86. Okay. But I don't know yet. Rich Luttenberger is a Jersey guy. So he's wondering... How did wrestling in New Jersey prepare you to wrestle at the next level? Um, you know, I wrestled at a high school where it was a smaller high school, Brownbrook, but like we had so many like good kids that like basically coming in my freshman year, you know, it was like I didn't even know if I was gonna have a spot or not on the team, like as a freshman in high school. So like I had to fight for that. And then also just uh, like the talent in New Jersey, like it was so many good kids. I remember um, my freshman year and how it played out and ended up uh, placing that states and like realizing, like, you know, maybe I could like do this like at the next level because we had like 
a bunch of guys at the time ranked like nationally, you know, and like I was like, you know, wrestling with them, competing with them, you know, losing by like a couple points or like even beating some of them. So like I think a lot of that like got me ready for like the next level. Makai, I want to uh, congratulate you on an amazing career. Really, really looking forward to you wrestling next year. Um, I guess I have one, one more question I have for you. Who would you say was the toughest opponent that you faced in high school? And who was the toughest opponent that you faced in college? The toughest. Um, does it have to be like, so like, can it be like also like freestyle wise too or no? Yes. Anybody, it could be at practice. It could be wherever. So freestyle wise, I will say when I practiced against uh, Kyle Dake at the Olympic Training Center, he was like one of the toughest. And then him or Jordan Burroughs, because I wrestled both of them. And then um, high school wise, hmm, someone I practiced against was probably, oh, it was either Devin Carter or James Green. So Devin, I wrestled him here at Tech. I think I was like a sophomore. Yeah, he tore me up. And then uh, James Green, I was just like drilling with him. I wrestled with him a little bit my, I think, either junior or senior year of high school. And like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't go well. But, you know, those were like the two, I guess, toughest. If, uh, well, four toughest. And your message to – we have a lot of people who uh, listen and come on for football, come on for basketball. What's your message to the fan base? If somebody's in the in the area or is near a wrestling match, um, what's your message to the fan base to get them out and uh, get ready for next season and come check you guys out? Uh, you know, come. We got five returning All-Americans, you know. We might have, you know, five future national champions. You never know. So – and we, we will have more All-Americans, I believe, next year. And our program is just getting better and better. So uh, I'm just excited. I think more people should come out, and uh, hopefully they do. Makai, we're looking forward to next year, man. Congratulations and looking forward to seeing you back out there. Thank you. I appreciate it.